Hey there, St. Luke. I want to take a minute to talk with you about promises. This summer, as you know, we're doing a sermon series on the book of Genesis, and we're calling it Promises and Patriarchs. We're talking about how God has made promises to many of our forefathers in the faith. We've talked about creation, how God, after the fall into sin, made a promise to Adam and to Eve, that he would send a savior, one of their line, a human, would come and set things right again. This last weekend, Pastor Jared talked to us about Noah and how God promised Noah after the flood, I will never again flood the earth in this way. And that God promised that water was now taken from a tool of destruction into an instrument of blessing. Pastor Jared pointed us really hopefully back to our baptism. And now today, I want to spend a little bit more time thinking about that with you, but thinking about the idea of promises in general. So let me ask you a question. What's the best promise that has ever been made to you? Maybe in your wedding, the best promise that was made to you was by your spouse, that they would love and cherish you, and you returned that promise to them that you promised that to God as well, that you would love and cherish and honor and take care of this soon-to-be uh, spouse of yours. Promises change over the course of our lives. When we're younger, when we're little kids, maybe the promise that means the most to us is, if you get good grades on your report card, then I'll give you $20. Or maybe it's, if you behave while we're in the store, then we can go and get ice cream afterwards. You and I both know that promises in life are not always kept. Promises, even well-intentioned promises, sometimes fail. People break their expectations, break our expectations. People break their word. They don't follow through on what they say they will do. But the promises of God are different altogether. That's why we're spending so much time on this idea of promises in the book of Genesis, is because God's promises are different. And let me tell you why. In large part, because God's promises don't depend on us. Not at all. See, in our modern world, promises, or you might even call them contracts sometimes, usually are built on an if-then scenario. If a car company sells me this vehicle, then I promise to pay the cost of it. If you do this for me, then I will do that for you. That's what we're used to in our life today. But in our relationship with God, it is totally the opposite. The promises of God are completely done by him. They're fulfilled by him. They're made by him without our involvement, even in the least. As I'm teaching, I love to often remind people that your relationship with God is always a downward-facing arrow from him to you. There is nothing in this life that you have, that you need, that you have received that hasn't come from God first. We are always, in every way, responding to what God does first. Look with me again at those familiar verses from Ephesians chapter 2 that talk about our faith. By grace you are saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are Christ's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he has prepared in advance for us to walk in them. Every step along the way in those verses, we are reminded by Paul that God does all the work. This weekend in worship, my son Micah is going to be baptized, and I am just thrilled and excited about that. I get a little teary-eyed even thinking about it because this baptism is the promise of God at work. People have asked me a lot in the last couple of weeks, Pastor Ben, are you going to baptize Micah? Are you going to do the baptism? And I want to tell you why I've chosen not to do the baptism. Because just like the promises of God coming to us from the outside, I want that same thing for Micah. 
I want to participate in what God is doing to my son. So I'm going to hand him off to a pastor who happens to be my dad, yes, but I am going to hand Micah to my dad so that he can receive that promise of God that I have nothing to do with at all, that Micah has not earned, that he simply is given freely by God. You see, the gospel is done to us, not by us. Jesus died on the cross for us while we were still sinners, and God calls us to faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, not by our own doing, not because we've earned it, but simply because that's who our God is. Let me remind you of some important verses about baptism that say this same thing from Titus chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Once again, every step of the way, God is the subject and we are the direct object. God is the one doing the thing. God is active. We are passive, simply just receiving. And what a beautiful thing that is. Thank God, truly, that that's how things work. I know how many mistakes, how much sin is in my life. If the promises of God were up to me to live up to, if the promises of God were dependent on me completing a checklist of good works, I would never live up to that. And so I thank God. Truly, I thank God. I praise him for his character, for his love that reaches out to you and to me, that he washes us clean, that he does all the work by his own grace and mercy. So I pray that as we continue on in this summer sermon series of the promises and patriarchs in Genesis, that every step along the way you would be reminded that you too are a recipient of the promises of God that God has acted in your life and that you can trust it because you're not involved in it. It's simply just the beautiful work of God alone. Let me pray for you today. Almighty God, we thank and praise you that you are a God who makes the first move, that your love, that your promises, that your work in our lives are not dependent on us, but purely because of who you are, that you are loving and gracious. We pray that you would bless us this day, keep us in your name, remind us of the baptism by which you washed us clean in the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to live each day in those freely given promises that you make us. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God bless you today.